Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture on congenital syphilis. So, congenital means present from birth. Uh, and it is not related to genes if a woman has syphilis and is pregnant so the disease can spread from mother to the fetus so this is called vertical transmission but at first trimester tipno pallida that is the cothrip organism of syphilis cannot cross the placenta so typically only after third month that is around 10 to 15 weeks only after 10 to 15 weeks only after 10 to 15 weeks uh, the tipno pallidum infects the fetus so only after the first trimester remember this point only after the first trimester the fetus gets infected the infected fetus may have one of the following outcomes what are the outcomes there may be fetal death the fetal death may be of three types it may be abortion abortion is before the age of viability in bangladesh it is before 28 weeks 28 weeks uh, another outcome uh, concerning fetal death may be iud that is intra uterine death death of fetus after the age of viability that is after 28 weeks and the fetus may be alive during pregnancy but shows no sign after delivery which is called stillbirth stillbirth that is a, the fetus is alive during pregnancy but no sign of life after delivery so this is the outcome regarding fetal death another outcome there uh, there may be uh, birth of a syphilitic baby the baby after birth will show signs of syphilis so this is the second outcome third outcome would be early congenital syphilis the baby will be a normal baby on birth but it will develop signs of early congenital syphilis during first few weeks of life during first few weeks of, uh, of life that is the during the neonatal period neonatal period so early congenital syphilis is related to neonatal period and birth of a baby with latent infection who either remains well or develops congenital syphilis or stigmata later in life that is a baby is uh, born with normal uh, physiology but he is he or she is carrying the syphilis that is tibonome pallidum inside him or her will develop uh, in signs of syphilis or stigma of syphilis later in life so four outcomes fetal death syphilitic baby early congenital syphilis and late congenital syphilis and what is stigmata stigmata arises when late congenital syphilis is left untreated syphilis is a part of torch what is torch torch is an acronym torch is an acronym for a number of microorganism which transmits from mother to fetus from mother to fetus to fetus uh, during pregnancy and causes congenital anomalies so again torch is an acronym for some microorganisms so t4 toxoplasma o for others syphilis is included in others r for rubella c for cytomegalovirus and h for herpes simplex virus now we'll discuss about the presentations of congenital syphilis as we already discussed it has three presentation early congenital syphilis late congenital syphilis and stigma of syphilis so what are the signs of early congenital syphilis early congenital syphilis will present with maculopapular rash maculopapular rash so what is a macule a macule means a circular flat area 
a circular flat area on the skin which is less than 1 cm so macule is flat and less than 1 cm and papule is the same uh, less than 1 cm area but it is raised we can feel the papule with our hands so when it is flat it is macule and when it is raised it is papule both are less than 1 cm so there may be maculopapular rash on the baby and these papules this raised area may be fused together so several papules may be fused together and together they form plaques plaques that is they are more than one centimeter more than one centimeter together these papules forms plaques these plaques are called condylomata lata condylomata lata remember this this is an important point uh, we will discuss it again during adult syphilis condylomata lata there may be mucus patches mucus patches uh, that is broad flat erosive lesion broad lesion and flat and erosive there may be skin erosion lesion uh, with yellow discharge there may be yellow discharge so the discharge would be yellow so this is called mucus patches mucus patches let us clear the board so maculopapular rash condylomata lata and mucus patches there may be features around the mouth nose and anus the breathing would be noisy the breathing would be noisy and due to rhinitis and nasal discharge it is also called snuffles snuffles so when the baby breathes it will be noisy it will be noisy and there may be nasal discharge this is the nose there may be nasal discharge and this is called snuffles hepatosplenomegaly so the liver and the spleen of the baby would be enlarged hepato spleno hepato means liver spleno means spleen megaly means enlargement periostitis that is inflammation of the periosteum around the bone periostitis there may be generalized limb patternopathy what is generalized limb patternopathy there may be uh, inflammation of the lymph nodes around the body generalized not localized generalized limb patternopathy there may be inflammation of the retina and choroid which is called choroiditis there may be inflammation of the meninges which is called meningitis uh, there may be decreased number of rbc or hemoglobin this is called anemia and there may be decreased number of platelets which is called thrombocytopenia we will uh, see the picture regarding the symptoms so maculopapular rash this is uh, this picture is taken from cdc website this shows typical disc vomiting that is the skin is peeling off disc vomiting means skin is peeling off maculopapular skin lesion and they may be punched out so here we can see easily the skin is punched out and pale blistered it looks like blister blister burn burn out. it looks like blisters and the uh, lesions are mainly on ears and nasal bridge so as you can see the lesions are on ears and nasal bridge there may be discommission of the feet and palm so discommission of the feet and this is the palm discommission of the palm so this picture is showing this picture is showing rhinitis inflammation of the nose with mucopurulent nasal discharge so there may be pus discharging from nose mucopurulent nasal discharge hepatosplenomegaly this baby is showing hepatosplenomegaly the liver is enlarged typically the liver in the baby uh, babies are enlarged but here the liver is abnormally enlarged and this is the spleen this is the spleen so this black markings indicates the liver margin and we we have studied that the syphilis involves bones so this x-ray shows bone or abnormalities that is syphilitic metaphysis this is the epiphysis and this is the metaphysis syphilitic metaphysis 
at the ends of the shaft this is the shaft so this is the metaphysis and there is proximal distraction of the proximal end of the tibia there is distraction of the proximal end of the tibia not very clear here but we can assume there may be uh, the distraction of the proximal end of the tibia diminished density the density is diminished here this is a specimen showing syphilitic baby we can see all the signs here that is punched out lesion maculopapular rash desquamation nasal discharge and features around the mouth and nose all the features are apparent here now late congenital syphilis late congenital syphilis includes benign tertiary syphilis what is benign tertiary syphilis this is a type of syphilis which is uh, shows a type of chronic lesion called gamma so let us suppose this is a skin and there is breach of continuity of the skin and there is a punched out lesion this is the gamma and if we take histological sample for hair from here and see it under microscope we will see that this microscopic specimen will show us uh, granulomatous lesion granuloma you will uh, study about granuloma in details in pathology granuloma so gamma is a tonic granulomatous lesion which is found in benign tertiary syphilis there may be also inflammation of the periosteum around bone inflammation of the periosteum around bone which is called periostitis so what is paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria a fancy term big term now we will dissect this term so what is hemoglobinuria presence of hemoglobin in urine presence of hemoglobin in urine what is paroxysmal it means sudden so sudden appearance of hemoglobin in urine what is cold cold here signifies that there may be sudden appearance of hemoglobin in urine that occurs only in cold temperature so this whole condition this whole condition is called paroxysmal cold hemoglobinuria there may be uh, tabes, tabes dorsalis tabes dorsalis uh, it is a neurological condition when late congenital syphilis involves the nervous system it is called tabes dorsalis typically it involves the dorsal columns so there may be loss of position and vibration sense below the level of the lesion so tabis dorsalis syphilis involving the nervous system spinal column tabis dorsalis it may also involve the cornea which is presents as interstitial keratitis interstitial keratitis when the syphilis involves the cornea that is the outer layer of the eye outer layer of the eye so this is the eyelid this is the eye when the syphilis involves the cornea it is called uh, interstitial keratitis so and there may be also uh, painless effusion of the knee joint so this is the knee joint there may be effusion that is accumulation of fluid in the knee joint this is called Clarton's joint this is called Clarton's joint so here I have listed all the features benign tertiary syphilis, gamma, periostatis, paracetamol, polymoclomeria, tabis dorsalis, interstitial keratitis, Clarton's joint now we have come to the last part of our lecture uh, which will so show the stigmata of congenital syphilis uh, ok before going to that uh, here is a quick review of the congenital syphilis early congenital syphilis hepatosplenomegaly, snuffles uh, vesicular and bullous eruption that is skin discommission so distraction of the tibia which is also called Wimberger sign 
and during the late conjugal syphilis we will study this Hutchison incisor that is the notched incisor the teeth are notched like this typical normal teeth are like this but in Hutchinson incisors they look like this they look like this there may be interstitial keratitis involving the cornea and sensory neuronal defects sensory neural defects we will study these things in the next slides so stigmata Hutchinson's incisors so anterior posterior thickening of the teeth and notching on the narrowed cutting edge so the teeth will be like this on lateral view and like this on AP view mulberry molars what is mulberry molars the molar that is the last three tooth molar the molar teeth of both jaw I am showing the lower jaw uh, uh, the cusps of the molar that is the enamel of the molars are will be deficient there will be imper imperfection imperfectly formed cusp or deficient dental enamel on the molar teeth this is called mulberry molar no enamel here no enamel so high arched palate the palate nose lips and mouth the palate will be high arched like this the nose will be saddle nose so saddle nose means the nasal bridge typical nose is like this but sipilating nose will look like this the nasal bridge will be destroyed nasal bridge will be destroyed regardless means uh, that is features around the mouth nose and anus so if we draw a picture here eyes this is the nose and this is the mouth there may be fissures around the mouth nose and anus like this this is called regates salt and paper scars on the retina we cannot see this without uh, an ophthalmoscope there may be scars on the retina corneal scars exactly interstitial keratitis of late congenital syphilis which will result in corneal scars the tibia will be bent so normally uh, normal foot is like this here is tibia and here is fibula but in case of syphilis the tibia will be bent because of the destruction because of the destruction tibial destruction or periostitis as a result of periostitis the tibia will be bent tibia will be bent so here we can see the destruction of the tibia and as a result of this the tibia will be bent like this this is called saber tibia and last of all there may be bossing of frontal and parietal bones bossing, bossing of the frontal and parietal bones so this is a specimen showing the Hutchinson incisors notching here you can see the notching notching and gap between two teeth Hutchinson's incisors this is uh, also called maxillary hypoplasia that is under development of the upper jaw so here is under development of the upper jaw upper jaw is not very developed lower jaw is prominent and uh, last of all this picture is showing regates that is scar around the mouth and nose here we can see this faintly so this is all about uh, the congenital syphilis this is a small topic so i have tried my best uh, to collect the materials from different parts of the textbook for you hope uh, this will uh, be enough for your examinations if you have any questions or suggestions or any complaints regarding this video please let us know in the comment section and we will meet you in the next one thank you